Hi, this is Middle Class Matt from don'tbythehype.blogspot.com and NC Sports Genius One. And you can follow me on Twitter on the same name, NC Sports Genius One. Today I'm going to recap the Duke Carolina game. Now, a few things that I mentioned in my preview to the game, I was shocked at what happened. I thought the UNC could win this game, but I didn't think they would blow Duke out. Duke was never really in this ball game. They were absolutely dominated, dominated pretty much from start to finish. Another surprise was Kendall Marshall. I thought Kendall Marshall would be a contributing factor and a good player, but I never thought he would absolutely dominate Duke's guards. He was the best guard on the floor that night. He had 20 points and 10 assists and a very impressive informants. Just as impressive considering the spotlight that was on him and the national spotlight that was on this game was his performance at State, where he had 22 points and 13 assists and zero turnovers. If Kendall Marshall can have games like that in the NCAA car tournament, Carolina has a legit shot to win the national championship. Now, as a UNC fan, we are really excited about the North Carolina victory. It was a revenge game. I said in my preview of the game that really North Carolina needed to show that they could win in the big moment and step up. And this was the time to win. And they did. And they were very impressive with an 18-point victory over Duke. The worst loss Duke suffered at Cameron Indoor Stadium since 1989. So, UNC looked very good. The only problem with this victory and the reason, well, there's two reasons why us fans can't get real excited is one, is that it's kind of bittersweet because all us UNC fans know that Duke really should have been beaten by Carolina twice. And two, is because the truth is Duke is not an elite team. They're just not. They really should be an eight or nine loss team instead of five. There's no way an elite team on their home floor is beaten by another elite team by 18 points. It doesn't happen. Duke's stock is inflated because the refs help them out so much in the ACC. They've got wins they shouldn't. And they've also pulled out some lucky ones and had some things go their way that shouldn't. They really, like I said, should be an 8 or 9 loss team. They're not the high caliber team that their record shows. So it was a good win for UNC, but probably not great if you're looking towards the national championship. If you're looking for sort of a measuring stick for the national championship, not a great victory. With that said, all us UNC fans are really excited that UNC won and beat Duke so badly. The real advantage UNC had was one that I previewed, and that is the front line. They really had no answer for Tyler Zeller, Harrison Barnes, and John Henson. Between the rebounding and shot blocking and scoring, Duke just couldn't match up. They have big guys, but they just don't play big. And UNC's big men absolutely dominated them. Those three players that I just mentioned actually were first team all AC, ACC, and deservingly so. Even though that's three from the same team out of the first five, UNC is head and shoulders better than anyone else in the ACC. Kendall Marshall made the second team, and the two performances I mentioned earlier probably really propelled that. So four of the top ten players in the ACC came from one team out of twelve. It's very impressive, but it was really due to these guys. They're some of the clearly the best players in the entire league. Another thing I mentioned in the preview was having a six-man sort of step up. And James Michael McAdoo had a pretty solid game. He had a great follow-up tip um, that made ESPN's top highlights. And so maybe he's coming along. They'll, UNC will definitely need him if they want to win a national championship. So I'll see you guys next time. This is Middle Class Matt from don'tbythehype.blogspot.com and NC Sports Genius 1. Go Hills!